So I'm back now, I've got my plate completed. It's been curing for a few days in the refrigerator. Um, you wanna keep these from freezing. Sometimes I've frozen them before and that'll break up the surface of it and it'll actually separate the water from the gel. So I've got some inks that I've rolled out. Um, I am using like a speedball water soluble print making ink. And this is nice because it's totally washable. Um, sometimes as you're working, whether it's a monotype or a block print, you, you try to hand print these things, you'll notice that your ink dries out fairly quickly. And that's what's nice about this process because there's so much moisture in the gelatin. So your hand printing has a longer work time. And the other nice thing about these is like, I don't know, as I've been preparing my demo, they're almost totally dry. And so I can add just a little bit of water by spraying to them, spraying a little water on top of those. And I can revive that ink pretty quickly. Um, a lot of times I will use acrylic paint, but the trouble with that is like if you let it dry on your brayers, it's going to trash them. So I'm going to do a little bit of demo with that. I've got a whole bunch of textures over here and just some different stamps that I've picked up. So I'm going to kind of show different textures and layering techniques. Um, I've also got a few photocopies over here and things that I pulled from magazines. If you have a really dense, um, glossy image that you found in an older magazine, like a lot of black and white stark contrast usually you can get this to work it's kind of a tricky tricky thing so i don't know if i'm gonna have success but i'm gonna try um so i'm gonna go ahead and start with yellow just because i like to build my imagery up um cmyk style so i like to go yellow first and sometimes i won't even do anything to my yellow i'll just roll it out and just allow it to be kind of like my first layer. I'm gonna put a good deal of this on here because I want it to, I want it to really like create some vibrancy. So, I think I might put a few textures in here just to kind of illustrate a few things. Like I'm gonna brush through in some spots and it's really what you see is what you get. The only difference is that it's kind of offset. Like it'll go backwards to some degree. So I've got a bunch of paper torn up here. And you can use sulfite paper for this. Cheap paper works great. All you've got to do is lay it on there, rub over the surface. You don't even have to use a lot of pressure necessarily. And you can get a really good transfer going. So looking for a nice bright yellow to start with. And you can see those brush strokes coming through here. Now it absorbs almost all of the, all of the ink off the surface. Um, so you can continue rolling on top of this, but if for some reason, you know, you wanted to keep your red layer nice and pure, you certainly could. What I usually like to do is do a whole series of yellows on several pages first. Then I cut them back and I kind of hit all my prints in a stage. So I think I'm going to do that, but I, I want to get some of this gold mixed in there too, to kind of give it a little bit of shine underneath. I rolled these out pretty thick earlier because I knew they'd probably dry out and I didn't want to have more. Ink. The other thing that's nice about the water base is your cleanup it doesn't have to be right away. So, you know, you get busy and you got 50 minute classes and students showing up and rolling in and all that stuff. You could conceivably be doing this class after class, which is kind of how I did it when I taught high school. I'm gonna mix a little gold into this layer. Draw with my braid or get some textures in there. That's what I want to do. Oh, yeah, I like these cards quite a bit because they make nice textures that they took too much out, scrape through like that. Students are going to be hard on these. Um, a lot of times when I'm working with students, especially younger students, like I do in workshops, they would be really, really hard on these plates and they'll break them. But what's nice about that is you can revive the plates by heating them up again. So like often I'll take all the broken plates, I'll throw it into like a big stove, like a stove top pot. I dig that pretty well. It's gonna take a little while for that to dry, but I think it'll be a really good first layer. Anyways, you can melt them back down in a saucepan <clears throat> and then you can recast them. Another thing you can do is if you put it in if you put it in a, uh, like an aluminum or some kind of a 
cooking pan. You can just throw it back in the oven and this gel it'll melt back down and you'll get the surface that you want again. Get a little more yellow going on. I'm gonna do about three of these and then just take them all through the same process, trying different things. It's a very immediate, very fun and rewarding process. Often I'll start this whole thing and I'll end up like three hours later with like 30 or 40 prints. They're not all awesome, but learn a lot and experiment with different textures and things. Like this one, I'm just gonna keep solid. Like I said, I've used sulfite paper, just regular old drawing paper before. Kind of like that muted yellow. Okay, so you could wipe this off if you wanted to. All you'd have to do is add a little water to it like this. Get yourself a paper towel. And I like the blue shop towels. Um, this is something that I learned as I was teaching K through 12 education. I really want to integrate printmaking, but I didn't have money for a press. And so this hand printing process was really attractive to me. And I have a class now that I teach in the summer times, non-traditional printmaking. And this is one of the really fun kind of immediate monotyping processes that we do. So you're creating unique one of a kind prints, not an addition. A lot of students will get into this and then like make their own gelatin plates at home. Daddy, you've done that. <laughs> Pretty fun. Really easy to do like in your home studio. So I could just print this straight on top of the other and I'll get some oranges out of that, but this is when I like to disrupt things a little bit um, so that I can create some nice texture work. So I bought these things. I, think I got them from Blick Materials. And they're just a bunch of like rubbing textures for little kids, but they work great for this kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna press this one like right here. I'm gonna try not to move it around because that'll blur my imagery but it creates a pretty sweet little texture that's gonna allow that yellow to come through. What else do I wanna do? Aluminum foil makes a pretty sweet texture too. You gotta be careful with that though because a lot of times it pokes through the surface. So I'm not getting much out of that, so I might just kinda of give it a twist and see. Do some marking with it. dissolve of some sort. It usually gets pretty exciting here at the uh, red level. I'm gonna go back to my first one that I did. I'm just kind of wanting to think about where this texture is and how it's gonna interact with this stuff. If I want to see a lot of resolution in this texture here, I'm gonna try to get that on a yellow area. So very loose in terms of registration. But like I said, this is the level that really pops well. And I lost a lot of my previous textures, but you get a nice complex texture here where you have like these different yellows and these different whites coming through, um, some oranges where it's thinner. So I'm pretty happy with that. I still have ink on here and I could print this too. It's kind of like a proof off thing, which I'll be showing next. But sometimes I'll just take my prints and clean off the plate. And I'll get some pretty cool stuff. Like I got a little ghost of that, a lot more orange because it's less ink. So I think I want to clean this off now. So I have like a bunch of newsprint, it's trash from the studio. And I just use that to get all this off of here. Some of this newsprint becomes really cool too. Make bookmarks out of it or whatever, or you can collage it. So I'm gonna do like another red layer here for my last print. Starting to get a little tacky. So I'm gonna lay like a good deal of this up in here. I'm just gonna kind of fade a little bit. And I think I'm gonna do, I throw a ribbon on top of there lay some texture up in there. See what else? Got this kind of interesting shaped ribbon too. There's a string in here somewhere. There it is. Throw the string all up in here. Go on a 
throw one more thing in there. Let's see. Yeah. Just this thing that's off the bottom of the paint container I think I'm gonna put in here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a proof off. A proof off is gonna create a lot tighter illustration of the text piece that I'm looking for. So basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling all the ink away that this newsprint has access to. Which I think this will actually create some really nice compositional things as well. But then when I pull this off, I get really nice impressions of these textures that then I can print on a yellow layer or whatever. We'll see what I get from this. A little bit going on, let's see. So, I really want to see this ribbon in here, so I want to make sure that's in a clean area. Because I have a lot of differentiation in it. Yeah, so that ribbon, you can see a lot cleaner here. Some of these techniques with the uh, strings and things. And really complex, interesting kind of backdrops for what I'm going to do with the blue. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a kind of like a split roll thing. I'm gonna throw some red and some blue on here. Just kind of create a more complex color mixture. So you don't have to do this completely strictly CMYK. If you wanna do this more painterly, that's perfectly fine. But I urge you to experiment with it because I found so many different things that really informed me through the process. It's pretty dry. When I buy these inks, I try to buy the process colors like the cyan, the magenta, and the bright yellow because I do want them to kind of behave like a traditional industrial printing thing. That way I can get all those secondary colors that I'm looking for. Okay. I think I want to try to get this really tight texture in here. Just gonna go right on that difference there. I'll break out some of these little guys. I'm gonna proof this off first. Maybe I'm gonna pull the ink off of every little bit. Again, I really love what happens here. Pretty sweet. I'm gonna pull this up and see what I got left. Pretty good texture, pretty clean. And I think over here I'm gonna like do a little stamp. So they got these really kind of cheesy stamps at um, Goodwill. Just bought them out. Got every single one that they had. So it creates kind of a cool counterproof. I mean, I could ink these up and put them on top of the other stuff too. Let's see. I think, you know, I think I want to start one fresh like this with just the blue and the red and maybe go backwards and try some yellow over the top. Just to kind of illustrate that you can see that texture really, really clean when you do that. And then these little stamps that counterproofed off. So, let's see. Next, I'm gonna go with like, some more blue. Go back to some of those other pieces. I've gotten these to work for like up to two weeks before, which is cool. So as long as you clean it, take care of it, cover it, make sure it's refrigerated, doesn't freeze, it should be okay. Students oftentimes will want to add like every color on the spectrum. The unfortunate thing is that it ends up kind of like brownish or neutral colors. So it is a good way of limiting color choice to introduce this as a yellow, red, blue. And then when students start to see they add too much color on there, then it becomes difficult to predict what they're gonna get out of the deal. 
Hopefully they've learned the idea that limiting their color. There we go. And then using color intelligently, one on top of the other, you discover a lot of cool stuff. just a small bottle. Okay. So you want to shoot for some green in this area. It's not a very interesting area anymore, so. I really dig this area, this area. I feel like I need some kind of a subject in here, and maybe that's when I start to look for objects that I can literally just take an impression on. So I think for that spot, I'm gonna go back with some red. Lay it on pretty heavy. Obviously absorbent things are going to remove the ink, whereas if I try to use like heavy things like wrenches, hammer, whatever, it's not necessarily going to allow that because it's not going to absorb the ink. It's more about like the impression that it puts into the ink. Yeah, I've already got a spot here where my, it's like where it broke. So I've got a little crack in there. That's pretty normal. And I shoot for somewhat of a red violet. I'm gonna use this crescent wrench here. I also had this really cool, like, little ruler. I feel like I can stick in there pretty well. And again, I'm going to do a proof off, but I'm careful not to move my objects because I just want to absorb the ink around them and allow my objects to develop an impression in that ink. I get a very good impression there. I'd have to push it pretty hard, I think, to get a better one much out of that either. I think I need to push a little harder. There we go. I can hear and I solve that issue. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a card in this spot to create some texture in here that kind of resembles that wrench because I got a little bit of it to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this in that bottom spot there. But yeah, you don't have to print the whole paper. And you can strategically work different things in and around that. So I like that pretty well. With that violet on top of that yellow, I'm getting more of kind of like a sepia. Um, so thinking about, again, color theory and things like that. So last thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to do a photo transfer, which is, again, hit or miss. Um, some days I can get it to work, some days I can't. It seems to work best with really, really cheap acrylic inks, like Apple Barrel stuff that you buy at Hot Coffee or whatever. I don't know why, but it seems to. So I have some cheap acrylics here that I'm going to try. We'll see what happens. When I do this, I usually like to clean my plate off. I've got this really cheap, like, ultra marine stuff. Hopefully I have some left. That'd be cool. We'll try this. This green. 
and stuff's probably older than me. It's a little much. <laughs> it's okay though. So when you brayer out fresh acrylic like this, you really want to spread it out and get it thin because if it's too thick, you're going to get all this like stringy texture through here, which really is representative of the fact that it's not thin enough. It doesn't lay very well. It's got too much texture. Also, when you're trying to do a, a a photo transfer, you kind of want your ink to be relatively thin and relatively uniform on this. And it's kind of starting to dry out, which is kind of what I want. I'm gonna start first with this one. Hopefully it does the thing that I'm looking for. And I just place it gently on top like that. A lot of times I can't resist the urge to like smooth it over. That's really not how it works. Um, the best success happens when it just lays on top and it starts to absorb the acrylic ink in the areas where there's not print. In the areas where there's print, that toner on the other side is gonna block it out from coming into the paper. And that glossy paper seems to be more resistant than other types of paper. So I just kinda of wait and look for like, is it buckling a little bit on this back end so I know it's been pulling enough? So we'll see if it works, I don't know. You can usually see the imagery on here if you were successful. Actually, that was successful. Get down there real quick. See if you can see that. So I was able to get that text in there pretty well. As I said, it's not perfect, but you'll get kind of a grungy transfer. So yeah, I've got this paper that doesn't have much on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that now. What's cool about it too is that it automatically offsets the print, meaning that like when we read it originally, it was the right way, and we lay it down, it's backwards, so it comes back the right way. Okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. Have fun experimenting.